Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So let's start off, Franklin, and talk about what's going on in social media these days. Not something we talk about a lot, but there is a lot of there's a big stir in in social media over the upcoming debt exclusions. That's correct. Um, uh, what we've had is uh, 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 the uh, municipal rate um, had uh, the, the people uh, the building committee of the uh, for the municipal rate had its final uh, public session. Uh, they described how the energy was going to be used and also the uh, final pr- uh, uh, price tag on the building itself okay. um, at thirty three point four million dollars. Um, and, uh, of course, the library has been vetted for the last three years. And, right. Um, but you're always going to have a discourse. And it's usually in the past it would happen, you know, at these public meetings. Nowadays, people are just going straight to social media. And those social medias are both Facebook and uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, next door, next door, Belmont next door. And uh, uh, you're just seeing um, uh, not just uh, let's say complaints or anything like that. We're seeing analysis based on other people's uh, interpretation of certain things. Let's let's talk uh, about the rink. Okay. Uh, there are two. Uh, there there are of course rinks being built all over the country, and there's two that are nearby here. One's in Brookline and one's in Marblehead. The Marblehead um, uh, rink is right now proposed for I believe like seven million dollars, and the uh, br- the rink in, in Brookline is is which is two rinks, okay. an outdoor rink and an indoor rink, uh, is, in, is in the 44 to $50 million range. So, so naturally, some in the community would ask, why can't we do what Brookline has done? What's, what's different, Franklin? Well, what's different is that uh, they're producing um, uh, their own set of facts, let's say. You know, and it's, uh, they can make an analysis of that. And as you know, they can say, why aren't we building it this way? Uh, what happened at the uh, public meeting? Uh, was that uh, Ted Galante, the architect, basically said, look, you have different, you know, there's, there's basically when you're looking at rinks, it's apples and oranges. You know, they're, they're all not all the same. It's just yeah. like a house. You build a house or you build a uh, commercial space, they're not going to all be uh, exactly alike and they're not mm-hmm. all going to cost the same. Now, with the case in Marblehead, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Galante basically said, I, you know, they, they have, this is just a, an initial um, uh, a feel of what this could, could be done. So but he said it can't be done for $7 million. It's just, it just can't, you okay. know, and, and, and he made a, a, a very uh, detailed and uh, convincing uh, argument about why certain costs cost some, you know, like in Belmont, you'll, we're, they're doing it a certain way. Uh, you know, they're not going to put metal siding, they're going to put brick and they're going to use certain, uh, um, material that is going to be longer lasting. He says maybe that's why Brookline is a little bit uh, less money. But if you really look at Brookline and you look at you know how much money is going to be spent in Brookline and in Belmont, they're basically comparable. Okay. Um, how, how about information in terms of um, you know how this is going to affect taxpayers' tax bills? So. Well, there's a, a, um, there are uh, actually a few uh, residents who've uh, put out their own um, like how to how to figure out how much you're going to be paying, you right. know, and they're, they're, they're very good, um, and you can find those uh, pretty easily. Um, and um, it's gonna, I, it's, it's going to cost about um, if you look at. Uh, if you're an av- if you if you bought a house if your ha- if your house is the average in Belmont which is over a million dollars you know we're talking you know we're not talking a big we're talking big money when you uh, talk about your residential home an average home in Belmont it comes to about four hundred and forty dollars uh, you know for 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 both you know and and of course that's a you know that's a significant amount of money um, but you know people should have that information in, on hand. So the, um, the the town treasurer has actually posted some estimates on his website, um, mm-hmm. and if people want to have a sense of what the cost for the average Belmont home will be, um, they can go to the treasurer's website and and get an estimate there. Um, you know, of course, that's for the average cost home in Belmont, and we we have some diversity in terms of home prices, inclu- in, including multi-unit buildings in which. So you should go to the assessors. Uh, you should go to the assessors department and look at how much your house is being 
is worth uh, by the town. The town, yeah. you know, it's what the town values your house is. That is going to be what uh, the, uh, it's going to be determined how much your taxes are going to be. Okay. Uh, what's your sense of how much social media will affect um, the upcoming um, debt exclusion votes? Well, yeah, social media is always, uh, you know, you really have to, uh, you know, if, if you have a, if, you, if, if it's a big thing, like let's say Donald Trump, you know, uh, you know, he goes out and he would, he goes out and does social media and, and you know, millions of people listen. Usually in small towns, social media has very little effect. I mean, it's, it's something that, that, you know, your supporters, and it might be just a handful of people, are going to, you know, uh, rally around and say, oh, this is, this is what, it, you know, this, this is, this is what we're, we should be looking at. This is the real transparency. Uh, you know, how much is that uh, worth anything? Um, you know, it's so late in the game, you know, we're not even in the 11th hour, we're in the, we're in the 11th minute. We're, we're less a month away. Most yep. people have decided, you know, they put up their signs <laughs> for, for the library and for the rink long ago. You know, they're not going to be changing their, their, their thinking on this. All right, Franklin, should we talk about plant, um, electrical light rates? That's uh, right. Uh, um, or, I'm sorry, electrical rates. That's next. right. While the uh, uh, Belmont Light will be coming out with a public meeting in the next week or so, I believe in the last week of, of October, so it's two weeks away, uh, they did present, their uh, their analysts did present to the uh, board what what should be proposed in, uh, to, resident, to residents. And so it's going to be just like what we're seeing with nat nat national grid and the elect and the uh, gas rates. We're going to see an increase in, in, in Belmont of about, I mean, think 12 and 13 percent between residential and commercial. All right, Franklin. And and these these proposed rate increases, they're not final yet. The light board has to approve them. Approve them. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. I mean, this is this is still, you know, just a proposal. This is good. You can almost call it a draft. I think what they're going to do is that, is that the uh, the light board and, and their supporters are going to, you know, find a way to make it make it simpler. And that's what they were talking about at this meeting last uh, uh, earlier this week. They said, you know, we can't just go out here and throw them, you know, into the deep ditch with all these, you know, an analysis on what, you know, the generation rate and distri distribution rate, you know, they're going to make it simpler. But basically what you're going to see is that uh, for the average homeowner, and the average homeowner has a 500 kilowatt bill mm -hmm. every month. So what you're looking at is the current bill is for a resident is about $111.19. That's going to increase to 125.18. So we're going to see a 14% a $14 increase uh, in for for the average resident. And how, how soon would these proposed electrical rates go into effect? Uh, and, and the next uh, billing once they're approved. I see. All right. Well, something to keep in mind is that these are well below the increases of uh, what's being discussed, um, or, or, um, you know, what's what what National Grid is seeking approval of for for gas. That's um, right. It's 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 much less. And, and even if you look at. Um, uh, uh, um, other um, like electrical, um, uh, uh, not the non-municipal uh, electrical utilities, they're higher also. All right, Franklin. Well, I'll, I'll be switching to an electrical space heater this winter. <laughs> All right. So um, next up, um, let's talk about what's happening with the planning board. We've had a number of, of departures and and it's it's affecting what's what's taking place. That's right. Um, what we had is a, the, the sudden uh, resignation of Steve uh, Steve Pinkerton, who's been for five years, has been on the board, and I believe it's the last two or three years he's been the uh, chair of that board. He's been a, a great source of uh, uh, of continuity for a uh, for the planning board. He, he he runs a very clean and very uh, you know he's very good at what he was doing. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty sad to see him go. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, Matt Lowry, who is the uh, uh, vice chair, he said it was uh, coincidental that um, he, he was also resigning. And just before he pressed the send button on his, uh, on his email that was going to go to Stephen, he found Stephen's <laughs> email now, saying he was resigning. Now, so, he's so Matt has decided to stay on. Um, temp temporarily, temporarily until there were some new appointments. That's right. Uh, and that will be up to the select board. The select board will have to uh, find people who are capable of doing a planning board. I mean, the, the one thing that was happening with the, with the planning board is that 
unlike the Zoning Board of Appeals, <clears throat> they only have one associate member and they, uh, and they moved that associate member to a permanent member just recently um, for the Planning Board. The Zoning Board of Appeals has three associate members okay. and that's just the way that it was, it was designed to be. So whenever they lose a member, they have somebody right away. Bell, and, but uh, for the uh, planning board, it's going to take um, maybe a month, let's say. So in practical terms, what this did is it uh, delayed a very major project that's happening on Belmont Hill, and that is the Belmont Hill Schools parking plan or project. And that, that you know, they were going to go before us. Uh, they were going to get a vote uh, this week. Uh, to uh, approve a site plan review and they were going and there were a lot of people on the meeting it was a virtual meeting who wanted to talk about this and you know they, they, there's a lot of concern about why putting a parking lot in you know the, the Marsh Street area and, and Prospect Street and and what does this mean for, for residents and this is delayed it for you know a while. So there's a delay in the decision on the project. Do, do we have any sense of of which way the um, the planning board may have voted on that or, or might have voted on I, that project? They, they I, I I believe it would have got the necessary votes. Okay. Uh, uh, even with two members off, but uh, at least with one member off, I should say. But it's it. There's also the the, the uh, at this week's meeting. One member was away. One member was was going to recuse herself. There, they did have th three possible votes that would have approved that to go to design review. But as as uh, uh, Matt Lowry said, you know, let's wait. You know, let's wait until we have a full board because then we don't have to have any kind of. There's no disagreement on on who. You know what the what the planning board's real intent was. They wanted to make sure that everybody was. On, on the same page. Let, let me ask you about what what some other types of projects that, that might be affected um, but by what you know what's happening with the planning board. Um, oh everything from like you know wanting to put dormers on your roof to, okay. to major projects. I mean everything goes to the planning board so if any new projects coming down uh, you know uh, on the route you know it's going to be delayed. So this is a, it's, it's not it's, no, I don't want to I don't want people to think that it's going to be delayed a year. You know, but it's still going to be a delay. All right, and, and and the select board has to find qualified appointments, and that's and, and and they do have them. I mean, there are people who always, when there's an opening, they want to join the planning board. Now they're just going to have to go through the whole process of bringing them in and, and talking to them and, and getting approval. All right, Franklin. Well, thank you. And um, if you'd like to to see more of Franklin's reporting, please go to belmontonian.com and. Um, we'll see you next time, Franklin, and we'll see our audience next time. Thank you.